What a great start to the day. We've looked at humanity, we've looked at culture, we've looked at fighting for a brand's purpose. One of the things that you want to have with all of that is understand personalization and the new storytelling. So you can understand how that works and put it all into a happy place. So to do that, we've got two, I think you'll agree, of Latin America's finest media and marketing minds. They are both very gregarious people and they are big supporters of the festival. I think they've been well since the start, which is very exciting. So our next session is all around the creative revolution. Let's please welcome to the stage Eric Tortell, SVP Tees, yes. <laughs> Woo. And by no means, last but not least, we have Alejandro Betancourt, Associate Brand Director of PG, yes. <laughs> Very good. Good luck, yeah. Eric. <laughs> you go. I need the clicker. <laughs> clicker is missing. There you go. The clicker. <laughs> That's yeah. too much activism. There you go. Thank Do you, it. sir. Um, Hi, everybody. Um, I know you all came for the other guy. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'll try to be as quick as I can. Um, now, seriously, I'm, um, I'm really, really, really grateful to uh, Jeremy for once again uh, allowing us to be on, on main stage. And I'm even more grateful to uh, Alejandro for sharing that stage with, with us. We are not yet a massive uh, company in the, in the industry. Uh, However, we aim to be very soon, um, and uh, sharing the stage with uh, the largest advertiser on the, on the planet and possibly the most uh, digital savvy advertiser in Latin America, is, that means a lot to, to me. Well, anyway, so we're going to start with a, a quote from uh, uh, Alvin Toffler. If you don't know uh, Toffler, he, he was a, uh, a futurist, a businessman, and a writer. Uh, he influenced tons of... Uh, people, uh, founder of AOLs, and, and a lot of people. Uh, he, he wrote a bunch of books, uh, two of which were really famous, The Future Shock and, um, and The Third Wave, in which he foresaw the importance in our day-to-day -day life um, uh, of uh, inventions such as uh, cable TV, the internet, personal computers, and mobile communications. So m mobile communications, uh, as you know, are everywhere. We, we did a, a focus group about three years ago. We asked people what they thought about the, the cell phone. What was the cell phone for them? And uh, we had some funky answers like, uh, it's my best friend, it's my third arm, or I couldn't live without it. So now if you think of your day-to-day -day life, um, I don't think there's any device, anything that you could relate using such uh, words. No, you won't say my toaster is my best friend or my car is my third arm. Um, so that, that's why uh, mo mobile is, uh, is, is a massive, massive change for, for us. Uh, we, we all have been waiting for the year of the mobile, or at least all the all people in the industry like me, uh, and that never came. No, the year, it's going to be that year, no, next year, no, and it will never come. But it did, it did come this year. So this year in the US, there's been more marketing dollars spent on mobile than on TV, okay? Um, and that means a lot. That means an awful lot. But at the same time, in the US, 85% uh, of the video that run on mobile were TVCs. I'm going to say that again. 85% of the video that run on the small vertical device were created for an extra large panoramic sc uh, screen. And in that case, if you want to see at scale, that's not even, that's, that's the, the screen uh, in your kitchen. Uh, it's not the extra large screen you have uh, in your living room, and it's definitely not the gigantic screen creative agencies use to show the creative, the, the new videos to, to the client, no? So that's saved what the, 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 in, the big stupid thing happening in, in that scale. Um, I'm not going to show you the, the counter uh, slide that says that uh, people spend twice more time in front of, of a mobile screen and TV screen, but uh, I'm going to show you this one so you see the, the evolution in Latin America of mobile. It's, it is massive, so we need to be uh, ready for that. Um, the, the other thing that is extremely important is online video concretely um, needs to be adapted to the, the medium. In, in that case, you see that uh, a customized online video is five times uh, uh, more effective than one that is not customized for the, 
the, the, the, the channel is, is running on. Um, in terms of mobile, uh, a mobile ad, ad, a mobile adapted ad is, gets four times more attention. And at the end, when we run ads, we want the attention of the users. That's, that's fundamental. OK? So uh, we want to go out and break from the, the TV standard. Um, the, actually, uh, sir, here, you, you spoke about a video not before. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you what I think is the best ad uh, of the year. Um, I am 100% sure you know about the, the, the ad. I'm 100% sure you've seen the visual of the ad. Uh, I'm not that sure you saw the actual video. Um, I haven't seen it until 10 years ago, by the way. Um, and uh, so I'm going to show you and then explain to you what I think. If people say your dreams are crazy, if they laugh at what you think you can do. Good. Stay that way. Because what non-believers fail to understand is that calling a dream crazy is not an insult. It's a compliment. Don't try to be the fastest runner in your school or the fastest in the world. Be the fastest ever. Don't picture yourself wearing OBJ's jersey. Picture OBJ wearing yours. Don't settle for homecoming queen or linebacker. Do both. Lose 120 pounds and become an Iron Man after beating a brain tumor. Don't believe you have to be like anybody to be somebody. If you're born a refugee, don't let it stop you from playing soccer for the national team at age 16. Don't become the best basketball player on the planet. Be bigger than basketball. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. When they talk about the greatest team in the history of the sport, make sure it's your team. If you have only one hand, don't just watch football, play it at the highest level. And if you're a girl from Compton, don't just become a tennis player. Become the greatest athlete ever. Yeah, that's more like it. So don't ask if your dreams are crazy. Ask if they're crazy enough. There's a bunch of things to say about that, that ad. Uh, but the, the first thing is it completely broke the TVC standard, the typical 30-second ad you show your product as much as you can. Um, the other thing is using Colin Kaepernick, which, by the way, isn't even a great quarterback. Yeah, he's not. Uh, but he's the image of uh, that movement of uh, football players that decided to kneel during the national anthem to protest against police brutality. Um, and associating the brand to that guy was extremely dangerous. And actually, the backlash has been massive. Uh, I mean, you, you guys are marketers. Imagine thousands of people burning your, your products <laughs> as a result of a, of a campaign you pushed. And uh, that would cause position to a bunch of people, no? That's, that's, that's dangerous. Um, um, the, the other thing is, um, and that's going to be very important for the rest of the presentation, uh, what they did is they did a two-minute video uh, in a world dominated by mobile where the attention span is average five seconds. So you do a two-minute video, it's a su suicide. No one will ever see it. What they did is they made it so emotional um, that the time was irrelevant. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, and actually, I, I can think only of two spots that good that created that many emotions. And both were from my friend uh, right here. Uh, one was Mother from PNG for the Olympics. And the second was, was Like a Girl, also from PNG. Also, two minutes video, super viral, etc. So again, two minutes video when, with an average t 
span of five seconds is, is crazy. They have right now 30 million views and counting, and not paid views, organic views. Um, so it's too early to see the results on the quarterly uh, numbers of, of Nike because they haven't been published, but uh, their online sales have been up 36% in the three weeks following the campaign. Okay? And that's, uh, to me, that's key, and that's really one way um, to break uh, the, the TV uh, mold, let's say. Um, um, so we're not all Nike, and you can't always do something like that. <laughs> Uh, so it's very important to get really adapted to, to mobile, no? Um, and, and again, five second average time is, is very short. You need to make sure you have the attention, you keep it. Uh, on, on that slide, that's just a regular campaign, but we see that behavior uh, across the board. Uh, the blue line is the compression, uh, the compression rate, no? So the people that drop off as long as the, the commercial is, is going. The, the yellow curve is the emotion, happiness in that case. You see that 56% of the users are gone after two seconds. 56%, okay? And usually your brand is at the end. Only 20% of the people will see your brand at the end. So if you do use a regular TVC, you're done. You're, you're throwing money uh, uh, through the, the window. Um, but anyway, I'm going to give the clicker to my friend here. Thanks, brother. To go Hey, how you doing? Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Formula is a festival that's very close to my heart. And actually, I think it's a pretty unique festival in the industry. Otherwise, where else in the world would you find two ugly guys like Eric and myself standing in a runway for supermodels? <laughs> Nowhere else, right? Thanks for that, mate. I'll never forget it. Now, in all seriousness, um, this is about the story of what has been our journey collectively with TEEDS over the course of the past year and a half in trying to figure out and decode this new world of a shorter attention span in what has been for us historically a culture of 30 second TV copy. That's what we know how to do, so our agency partners know how to do. The reality is if we want to drive the best consumer experience ever, which is what we try to do on a daily basis, that's very important, that's not, not a minor feat to be considered. Because today, the data tells us that we're making some improvement, but we're not quite there. I want to show you some numbers. Seven out of 10 consumers are saying ads are annoying. And annoying ads are, in my point of view, a function of three things. First, too frequent. If you get served ads one after the other, that's just annoying, right? Second, ads that are irrelevant. So if you serve an ad that has nothing to do with you, that's just, that's just a poor consumer experience. Third, whether it's not useful. If you just bought an electric toothbrush, I hope from us in Oral-B, and then three months later, I serve you an advertising saying, hey, it may be time to change the heads of the toothbrush. That's a useful experience. But if you bought something today and I keep hitting you over and over and over and over, that's just not a great consumer experience. The bad thing about it is that today, consumers who feel we're not delivering a great consumer experience have something to do about it. 30% of people are already using ad blockers. And if you're scared by that figure, I will give you an even scarier picture. That rate is growing at a double-digit pace year on year. So my 75-year-old dad might not know how to install an ad blocker if I serve him an ad that he doesn't like. But our millennial, centennial, Gen Z, Gen, whatever you want to call it, 18 to 34 young audience, will know immediately how to put up an ad blocker. Think about what that means for everybody in this room. Not for me, all of us, agency partners, tech partners, advertisers. If we keep delivering poor consumer experiences, we're going to run out of job. There will be no more ads to be served. Everybody's going to have an ad blocker. Now, I don't want everybody to look at me like, ooh, you're scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> the good news is the standard, at least from a format standpoint, let's forget for a second on creativity. From a format, from a media format standpoint, the standard has been out there since 2016. 2016, the coalition of better ads, which was a massive movement, integrated by advertisers, by tech partners, by agency groups. Many of you guys sitting in this very same room conducted a large research which showed what type of formats consumers disliked and what type of formats consumers actually liked. So the standard is there, available for everybody. You can go on to Coalition for Better Ads right now, and you will get a list. Yet we seem to be ignoring some of that. 
Now, there is a way around it, and my idea is to try to walk you through exactly that journey that we've been living over the past year and a half, all right? Now, when we talk specifically the digital ecosystem and in the outstream ecosystem to be more precise, remember the 70% I was telling you dislikes to be or, or is annoyed by ads? They dislike being served an ad that is going to immediately flash sound at them, right? Many of you I see on your cell phones right now, imagine if sound would pop up, it would be incredibly disturbing, right? So that's an annoying experience. And that's even higher number than the US. So if we were looking at the US saying, okay, now there's a reference, we crossed that line, my friends. In Latin America, Latin American consumers are really annoyed by these poor consumer experiences. So how to go about it? I have a very nerdy chart for you, because of course, at PNG, we're the only people that get excited about detergents and shampoo and deodorants and these kind of things. Uh, but I'll try to walk you through that, all right? In the top left-hand side of the chart, you are going to see a creative that in a moment I'm going to play for you. It's a 30-second copy created for the big screen, not for the little screen. On the right-hand side of the corner, thanks to facial recognition technology, we're able to run some tests with the purpose of identifying the emotions that consumers were feeling when they were exposed to the message. So you see some nice lines there around happiness, confusion, and engagement, right? But more interestingly, you see in the blue circles some peaks that highlight great moments in terms of happiness or positive consumer experience. And you also see some kind of alleys which you would likely get rid of, right? So are you ready? Are you with me? We're going to play the ad, and you're going to see the bar going throughout the commercial. Please keep in mind the moment where it comes up. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the acid test, and I'm going to play it sound off. All right? Let's see this. Branding is there. First volley, mm, not so nice. We keep going. Then all of a sudden, oh, this is reaffirming. A beautiful pack shot there. Ah, happiness. Ooh, broke demo, not so great. Then you get another small peak there. Engagement keeps being pretty decent. Falls a little bit with the same model, then goes up with the closure of the pack shot. Did you see that? You all, you all saw how that went through, right? Now, what I didn't tell you is that the light colored blue line that is there reflects the view through rate, which means, in other terms, that at least two or the two highest peaks of my copy, nobody was watching. Or less than 10% was watching, just to be fair with the data, right? Not to massage the data in my favor. Now, that's a big problem, right? So now you have the data, and now you're supposed to just, again, go to my friends at Teach Studio and say, okay, my friends, you gotta help me here. And we gotta reconfigure this ad that has already been shot, the production money has been spent, but we need to put something out there that represents a valuable or a good consumer experience for our consumers. We can't just go and put the 30 second sound off that I just showed you, because clearly it's not gonna work. Now, extra data, this was the first data set that we got when we put that through the image recognition technology. Second set of data, look at the differences between age groups and look at the differences in happiness when sound is on and sounds off. So left hand side of the chart, it seems to be that the highest positive association is in young audiences. Great job. Everybody knows that's a very tough audience to please. So good job there. Another piece of insight. Let's park it there. Right-hand side of the chart, what you see is that the biggest value that you get on sound off seems to be around the product message, which is something that we clearly cannot let go if we're trying to relaunch uh, a brand and communicate a message, right? Communicate a product message or a claim. So the insight there alludes to maybe trying to resort to captions as a way to help get the message across. You want to see what the final one was? Let me show you. Four insights. A skin around the ad to increase the branding. Right? If you remember, there were some peaks and valleys. So having the branding there from moment zero helps a lot. Second, the reinforcement of the messages with power captions. Again, this is not a movie in the theater where you have everything subtitled. This is just power lines. right? And third, the insight of what audience should then we go after with more intentionality in the understanding that this is the audience that is receiving the advertising best. So again, from a simple image recognition study, you drive at least three insights out. First, how to optimize 
the message that you're delivering, the product message, which was not so hot when we saw the charts uh, in the previous slide. Second, you get a targeting recommendation out of that. And third, you get to play a little bit with reconfiguring an ad that has already been produced. Okay? So let me show you uh, just um, the results that ultimately this had. Surprisingly for all of us, and I, I think Eric knew it, but I didn't know it. I wasn't expecting that. The results of mobile are even more powerful than results in desktop. Obvious. Now that we see Eric's presentation, we say, of course, in the big screen, maybe it didn't make that much sense. I mean, it didn't make a difference. But when you looked at it in the small screen, it did make a lot of difference. 30% in video completion rate is huge. It's a huge efficiency play. It's a huge effectiveness play because the message is getting there. All right? Now, well, I don't know about you, but when I uh, was studying, and I was studying storytelling, my professor told me storytelling is about three things. Images, sound, and the story itself. So if you take sound off, that's like sending a boxer to a fight with a hand tied to his back, right? For marketers, it's quite a challenge. So how do we play around that? Let me show you a case called, yeah, that's the title, What is a PP, right? For Pampers, for a new technology that um, impeded the sagging of the diaper, this is the original creative. Take a look. Nuevo Pampers Comfort Sec con extra sec pods. Mantiene a tu bebé hasta dos veces más sequito y hace que el pipí desaparezca. Pampers, amor, sueños y juegos. Beautiful, love the kids, beautiful music. Guess what? The music is not going to be present when we do the sound off, right? No surprise. Look at the results sound on versus sound off. Sound on, very good. Sound off, eh, not so much, right? So when we think about this, we say, okay, what are we to do? to make sure that we can keep some of the effectiveness behind the commercial by losing the probably key part of beyond the cute babies, but the music has just another, an extra layer of cuteness, if there's even a word, right? So let me show you what we did, and I'm going to cheat this time, and I'm going to show it to you with sound on to see if you can pick up the difference. Nuevo Pampers Comfort Sec con extra sec pods. Mantiene a tu bebé hasta dos veces más sequito y hace que el pipí desaparezca. Pampers, amor, sueños y juegos. Ah, oh, Alex, but you cheated again. You just told us that it's not about subtitling like a movie. It depends on the type of creative. That was the second learning that we had. Power captions were very useful in the case of Head and Shoulders. This was a 30-second copy. This one was a, was a much shorter piece of creative, which we then had to tackle uh, differently. All right? The message was very clear. Now, anybody care to guess the performance, sound off versus sound on? Yeah, we didn't either, so I don't blame you. <laughs> Purple line is sound on. Yellow line is the optimized version with sound off. So the second creative I played cheating with sound on, playing sound off outperforms sound on. So this is the new storytelling. This is the revolution that being able to play in this format allows us to do whenever we have the intelligence to be able to reconfigure the creative and deliver a better consumer experience. So again, it's about making sure you understand what is the superior consumer experience that we want to drive. Make sure that you have the intelligence in your hands to, the, to make decisions, actual decisions, even on, on commercials that have been shot already. And third, be brave to have a partner to help you reconfigure that. Right? So Eric, for more stuff now. Um, so if you think that's only for PNG videos and that kind uh, of videos, uh, we tested 234 ads across all categories, etc. Uh, do you have an idea of the difference in terms of emotions generated by sound on versus sound off? That's about that. It's exactly the same. Having said that, is it exactly the same? Um, about one third of the sound on performed better than sound off, about one third was the same, and about one third was uh, sound on was, was better. Um, so you, you always need to, to optimize. Uh, um, I'm going to show like a couple of examples uh, because we don't have that much time. Uh, if you want, we have uh, 96 uh, slides 
uh, creative playbook, so drop by the booth and we'll send you that. Um, so, the, the, as uh, Alejandro showed, a very, very good way uh, to be relevant even without sound is simply to include captions, not subtitles, but captions to, to uh, highlight uh, the qualities of the product or whatever message you, you want to, to send. So that's, that's, not brain, that's not brain surgery, it's not working science, but nobody does it. <laughs> so you really, really, really need to, to do something like that. Um, another example uh, is pretty, if it works, yeah. So in that case, uh, we tested the, the, the video, again, with facial recognition. And we figured out that the moment where uh, she turns her head and looks at the camera is the highest level of emotion uh, within the, the whole video. Uh, so since we had to run it on mobile, um, and we knew something that long would never, ever, ever work, we just created a display ad with that. Um, and uh, simply by activating through the scroll, would have the lady turning her head. And that's super simple. But that's crazy. We got a CTR of 2.5% for that. OK, that's five times the, the benchmark. Uh, people just loved it. And it's just super simple. We're, we just cut a little bit of the TV ad that would have zero chance to, 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 to make anything. And we had the brown presence since, they, since the first second. And, and that's it. And that was that, was that, that simple. Um, another example uh, for Pompers, actually, um, what we did is, because the video was, wouldn't, would never work, we simply created a click and blow. So you would tap on it, blow on your phone, and I would move the baby's hair. And there's nothing. We didn't invent anything. That was the video that they gave, that they gave to us. It was exactly the, you know, we just animated it for mobile. Um, so, so again, uh, we we're going to close now. Uh, 40 seconds, that's fantastic. It's first time on time. Uh, <laughs> uh, you see? I told you. Um, I'm going to finish with another quote uh, from a guy um, I actually had the chance to have lunch with last month in, in Buenos Aires. Um, and um, it's, it, it, if you want to understand how animals live, you, you don't go to the zoo, you go to the jungle. Um, he, at the, that, that lunch that we had, he explained to me that um, He's been once uh, hired by a Japanese firm uh, uh, to increase the sales. And what he did was he invited the CMO to spend a weekend at a very humble person's house. So he would understand how he lives and how to communicate to that person. Because obviously, they don't have the same uh, social status. That, you know, they wouldn't simply talk the same language. Another example was uh, for Kinder, actually, the chocolate egg Kinder. Uh, he was also hired uh, to increase the sales that were declining. And instead of eating reports and reports and reports and, and spreadsheets, he went to the kiosk and he put himself in the, in the feet, uh, in the shoes of an eight-year-old. So he would just go down and walk around the kiosk. And he figured out that there were no kinder eggs at the, the eye level of an eight-year-old. So if the eight-year-old doesn't see the kinder egg, he's not going to ask for that, and the parents will never buy that. And simply by changing that, the sales went up massively. Um, so he went to the jungle. So my, my recommendation is, uh, or our recommendation is, is simply to skip the zoo, go to the jungle. If you want to create brand equity, if you want to do amazing campaigns and, and, and increase the sales, skip the zoo, go to the jungle, and, uh, because your jungle is everything, that's where the growth is. So welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. We got everything you want. How do we know the names? We are the people that can find whatever you may need. If you got the money, honey, we got your disease. Well done. Great, great. Well done, gentlemen. I am sure third session of the day and the fact that we've got Teeds and P&G on here, someone is definitely going to ask a question here so they could look important. Who has a question on that session? Someone must have here somewhere. I was very impressed with the blowing on the baby's hair and making it move. That is awesome, I have to say. Wow, none of you have a question. Here we go. I knew we'd have one just here. A microphone is coming to you right now. 
I'm being told so we only have time for one question, but you know, I like yeah. to break the rules. So, so for, for both, not for uh, a particular one, so either <laughs> Eric or Alex. So uh, in the beginning, it's all about making advertising that doesn't suck, that is really awesome, that captivates people. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the solution for a world in which people don't want to be followed, don't want to be tracked, don't want to watch advertising, and don't want to be forced to watch advertising. But then on the other hand, we see this growth of performance-based marketing, trying to hack the system, trying to chop in bits and, and create like ads that work, but uh, just are gaming the system pretty much. And since we have this shift towards uh, more, more performance marketing, mm -hmm. how do you think that this is going to work? Like the, create, the, the will or, or the objective to create better advertising so people can interact with it or at least not skip it and not hate it, that would be the objective. But we need to sell some stuff. We need to sell some yeah. diapers yep. and I need, to make, I need to hack the system to make people click things. And we end up creating ads that are click here, buy now, shop now, download the app and performance-based ads. So can we do uh, both at the same time? Yeah, I think you, you want to take it? No. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for the question. I, 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 think, I think you can. And I think it goes back to the superior consumer experience uh, case, right? And I, and I want to try to give you a practical example. Like if you've heard Mark Pritchard talk, at least recently, he's talked about how we reinvent brand building. One of the pieces there is how do we reinvent advertising to be more push and pull instead of only push advertising, right? So let me give you a clear example on push and pull. The Olay Skin Advisor. It's here in the U.S., it's in China. It's quite big now. The Skin Advisor is simply an app where you go in and through facial recognition image, scans your face, tells you and suggests then what's the best type of Olay uh, product that you should buy for your skin. So that's a comment. So did you get that through an ad? Yes. Was that a useful experience? Absolutely. I didn't have to go to a dermatologist. I didn't have to go to a store. Just simply by scanning it with my phone, I was able to do it. And that's 100% tied to e-commerce. So it's, it's, I think the, the, it's, it, we're more into an and world than in an or world, right? It's about doing push and pull instead of doing push or pull. So that's the way we're looking at it. Again, we're in the middle of the reinvention that, that Mark has announced, and, uh, but certainly making sure that the consumer experience is at the heart of what we do, um, uh, we believe is the way to go about it. Is it, is it help? Is it, does, does it clarify? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, okay. I'm just worried about the other 99.9% .9 of the advertising that really <laughs> sucks. Because, because <laughs> you, you can do awesome, <laughs> epic advertising, but then if the others, are just doing crappy stuff, people get pissed off, and you get, uh, you, you get this... Uh, I'm, I'm an optimist, man. There's a lot of people yeah. here <laughs> that, uh, that want to give the consumers a superior experience, so I, I'm optimist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, we only had time for one question, but I think Alexander, Alejandra and Eric will be around to answer more questions. Are you around, guys, for a few yeah, more minutes? Yeah, of course, man. Excellent. Right. Well, let's hear it for Alec, Alexander and Eric. Thank you. Well,